Welcome to another exchange video. This is Ed. This is a, still part of the series of installing a test lab in Azure. In the previous video, we looked at joining this exchange machine boot to the domain. Um, I have joined the domain and rebooted. And now that I've rebooted, uh, we're now going to do the prerequisites and the software installation. I've already downloaded the files. As you can see, the exchange installation is six gigs and the other ones are quite small. So without further ado, let's go ahead and copy the prerequisites and we'll launch PowerShell Elevated. And we'll paste and enter. Now this will go and obviously collect data and start the installation. Depending on the size of your machine and how much RAM and CPU is assigned to it, uh, installation is pretty quick. While we wait for that um, to finish, what we need to do after this is um, I'm going to be installing uh, .NET Framework 4.8. And this will require a reboot, and then we'll be installing UCMA runtime version 4, and then the 64 bit version of Visual C 2013, which is required for Exchange Server 2019, but also 2016 as well. Uh, as you can see, the first part pretty much almost done. What I am going to do is I'm going to install the uh, Visual C++ files and then we will do um, .NET Framework and after .NET Framework we'll reboot the server and then you can just run UCMA runtime which is a pretty quick installation and reboot again and then we can proceed with the exchange installation in the next video. So you'll notice that there's quite an, a lot more set of prerequisites to install than you would see on a 2016 server um, or a 2010 or a 2013 server. Now you'll notice that I don't have any 2010 servers in this lab. The reason being is that you cannot introduce Exchange 2019 in a 2010 environment. It, the installation will just fail from the beginning. It will tell you that it's detected 2010 and you first have to remove 2010 before you can actually install 2019. If you have 2013 or 2016 in your environment, you can bring in 2019 but you obviously need to follow Microsoft guidelines in the sense of what C you have to be on, etc. So as you can see, the Windows features are, are done and it says we don't need a reboot, but we will reboot afterwards. Now what we're going to do is install Visual C++ 2013 redistributable. We accept the license terms and Install, done. Now what we're going to do is run .NET Framework 4.8. This installation is pretty quick, um, especially if your machine is quite fast. Um, I've seen it on 2016 servers where machines have 48 gigs of RAM and 16 CPUs across four sockets. Um, the extraction installation does take about five or 10 minutes. Right, so this is almost done and then we'll get to the widget screen. You need to accept the license agreement, click install, and it will now obviously verify the security, and then the installation will start. 
once this installation is done, we do need to reboot the server. Um, it comes up with a box that says, do you want to reboot now or later? And we need to reboot. <coughs> as soon as it's done, because you won't be able to install UCMA runtime until you reboot it. So you can see the installation is quite quick. Um, this is quite a powerful machine, not the biggest. But if you look at um, task manager, and I've changed this to logical processes. Um, I'm running 32 gigs of RAM, and I've got eight CPUs, which is pretty much uh, more than enough for a test lab. Obviously, in production, you'll have a lot more CPUs, and your RAM will probably go up to 96 gigs or higher. In, on this server, I don't have a dedicated disk for my page file, um, all the transport logs, because the test lab I'm not actually you know, going to assign and pay for extra storage is not needed. So I'll let this finish. I'm going to stop the video now and I will have a reboot and then I'll install UCMA runtime. And in the next video, I will look at doing Exchange 29 installation. Thank you for watching.